I'm uh, Gwen Barney, and I'm with the Western Canada Wilderness Committee. And I guess the concerns in British Columbia, there's a lot with wildlife. Um, one thing that most people don't know is that British Columbia has over 1,600 species at risk, that we have the most biodiversity in the entire country, and we don't have a provincial endangered species law. So when it comes from grizzly bears to killer whales to Vancouver Island marmots, species are left to fend for themselves. And in particular, uh, there's a lot of concern amongst um, environmental groups about the southern resident killer whales. And that's the killer whale population that's found along the southern coast of British Columbia. And it also goes into U.S. waters. And it's a small population of, of whales that are linguistically distinct or genetically distinct or culturally distinct. And it was just revealed about uh, three weeks ago that uh, over 10% of the population may have died of starvation. And so you have reproductive females, you have calves, and this very small population that's down to probably 80 whales, maybe a little bit less. And they've evidently starved to death because Chinook salmon, which is their favorite prey species, have fallen to historically low levels. They're, I think they're around 10% of their historic runs. And that scares a hell out of people. I, 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 you know, the, the, the southern resident killer whales are iconic in British Columbia, that when you're going to Victoria on the ferry, you can often see the whales when you're, when you're on, on the ferry, and, and they're probably the most studied uh, killer whales in the world. And I think it's shaken people to the core, and not just environmental environmentalists, but it's shaken British Columbians to the core that we appear to have mismanaged our salmon stocks to such an extent that you have uh, that killer whales are starving because they can't find enough uh, salmon, particularly Chinook salmon, to eat and survive. What's the main thing threatening salmon stocks right now here on the coast? Well, there's a lot of things. Um, y you know, the, the uh, fish and uh, catch quotas are probably too high. There's major problems um, with fish farms, in the, uh, particularly in the Breton Archipelago, and there have been study after study after study after study that show that these open net cage fish farms are like incubators for sea lice. And you have uh, young salmon, who, and, and, and a lot of the farms are situated in idiotic locations that are on wild salmon migration routes. And so you have young salmon that are migrating out to the ocean when they're very vulnerable and small, and they have to migrate past these fish farms. And they become infected, or these studies are showing that they are becoming infected with sea lice, and they're becoming fatally infected. And so you've had this massive collapse of the pinks, uh, pink salmon in the Breton Archipelago that um, scientists believe who have looked at the issue that can be uh, attributed to these uh, open net cage fish farms. And, and also climate change, there, um, that's kind of been on fast and furious. And there's real concerns that if there is, you know, a 1% increase in uh, the temperature in the Fraser River, that you could see a collapse of the Fraser River salmon. So British Columbians realize we have something really special in, in BC, that we have wild salmon. And, but if we aren't careful, uh, we're going to lose our wild salmon. And it's sort of, you know, with the death of uh, the deaths of the killer whales and with the collapse of the pinks and with starving grizzly bears and, and threat and you know Fraser River salmon runs that you know that's a wake-up call that's a clarion call to say hey we don't want what happened on the east coast with the collapse of the cod to happen in British Columbia that'd be a disaster. Uh, your uh, group's just uh, involved in a lawsuit against the federal government can you describe that for us? We are I, um, a couple of years ago the federal government introduced endangered species legislation and it's called the Species at Risk Act and we were thrilled, you know, finally, you know, environmentalists were just thrilled that finally the federal government had introduced a piece of legislation that was supposed to protect endangered species from coast to coast to coast. And what we found out really quickly when the act was being implemented is that the federal government didn't want to use the act to protect endangered species. And the number one way they didn't want to use the act was they, do, they didn't want scientists, when they were writing recovery strategies for endangered species, they didn't want scientists to identify critical habitat. Sometimes you think, well, so what if scientists don't identify critical habitat? But the reason why critical habitat is important to identify is because that's a habitat that a species needs to survive and recover. And it's a, it's a habitat that they rely upon. And most species in British Columbia and in Canada and indeed across the world, most species that are endangered are endangered because of the loss and degradation of their habitat. 
And so if you don't identify and then protect critical habitat, you do not recover endangered species in British Columbia, and you don't recover them in Canada. And so what's happening is also the Act, the Federal uh, Species at Risk Act, is, it's discretionary, it requires political will, and we have a government that's very reluctant to enforce it. And so environmental groups have been increasingly taking the government to court. And one of the species that we've had to take the federal government to court on is the southern resident killer whales. And, 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 they, and, and originally the government, um, you had uh, politics interference, interfering with science, and they were saying to the science uh, team that was putting together the recovery strategy for the killer whales, they were saying, don't identify critical habitat. And, and, then, that, and then we said to the government, we'll take you to court if you don't identify that critical habitat because these are some of the most studied whales in the entire world and they know, scientists know where that critical habitat is. So we won that victory and the government said, okay, okay, we'll put the critical habitat back into the recovery strategy. So it's put into the recovery strategy and then the government had, to, had I think it was um, 180 days to say, okay, now we're going to use the Species at Risk Act to protect that critical habitat. And in September of this year, they declined to do that. And what they said instead is that the arbitrary laws and the discretionary voluntary uh, policies that have put the killer whales into this sort of crisis situation are good enough to protect them in the future. And we aren't going to use the Species at Risk Act. And so what we're going to do, um, we're going to take the federal government to court and we're going to say, look, the intention of the act, as you said to Canadians, was to protect uh, species across Canada and to prevent them from falling, you know, going into extinction. And then you need to use the Species at Risk Act to protect the uh, habitat and the threats to habitat and the loss of salmon um, for the southern resident killer whales. And, and if the government gives a good goddamn about what's happening in BC with our whales and salmon, they'll do just that. 